In the Goblet of Fire, moments after Lord Voldemort's rebirth, he says the following, And here we have six missing Death Eaters, three dead in my service, one too cowardly to return, he will pay, one who I believe has left me forever, he will be killed, of course, and one who remains my most faithful servant and who has already re-entered my service. So who is the Death Eater that the Dark Lord believes has left him forever? Happiness can be found even in the darkest of times. When only he remembers to turn on the light. Well, firstly, let's look at all three of the possible Death Eaters Voldemort is talking about. So we have one too cowardly to return. For me, that's obviously Igor Karkaroff. His growing anxiety throughout the book gives it away easily. He's increasingly concerned when his Death Eater tattoo becomes darker and sensitive. It starts burning him, which signals the Dark Lord's impending return. Then we have the one who remains his most faithful servant, and this again is quite obviously Barty Crouch Jr., unknown to Voldemort at that very moment that his faithful servant will receive the Dementor's kiss, something he could have most likely stopped happening if he wished. But the one who has left Voldemort forever, who can that possibly be? Severus Snape comes to mind straight away, and although he is the obvious choice, it doesn't appear as simple as it seems. So what do I mean by this? Let me explain. The Dark Lord is a very intelligent and clever person. He would have immediately questioned Snape's loyalty the moment he asked for Lily's life to be spared, because it indicates just how much Snape cared for her that he'd request something that may have affected future endeavours if she actually had have survived. But had Voldemort actually survived his visit to the Potter's house, after slaying the one woman Snape loved, how would Severus have dealt with that? I honestly believe Voldemort would have killed him shortly afterward. Snape also allowed it to be public knowledge that he switched sides before the Dark Lord's downfall and made no attempt whatsoever to look for or help his former master return to power. In addition to his years of teaching in Hogwarts as Potions Master, he really did become a trusted ally of Albus Dumbledore. Furthermore, in addition to that, in the Philosopher's Stone, Snape was unaware that Voldemort was witness to his threats to Quirrell, all but confirming his belief that Snape had indeed betrayed him. I really do believe that the Dark Lord was choosing his moment to kill Snape. After some time, Snape's counsel still proved useful, but Voldemort did not forget. So, the line of, he will be killed, of course was always the Dark Lord's intention, but it was Snape's assassination of Albus Dumbledore that secured his former master's trust, and I feel Voldemort believed that Snape finally seen sense and had redeemed himself, and that seems to be a trait with him though. If a servant has failed to remain loyal or failed in a task, there is a small window of opportunity to in fact redeem themselves, and Snape proved this, albeit part of Dumbledore's plan. And what about Lucius Malfoy? Had he correctly anticipated early on it was indeed Harry Potter in disguise in his house and immediately called the Dark Lord, he would have proved himself again valuable to his master and all would have been forgotten. So it was indeed Severus Snape that Voldemort was talking about, but certain circumstances led him to keeping his life a lot longer than I believe he should have. Thank you very much for watching today's video everyone, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up, it helps the video out in a great deal. If you want to check out more Harry Potter folklore videos, they are there available for you to click. And if you want to check out my second channel, all you have to do is click that button on the right hand side for World of Wonder. Thank you very much and have a great day.